as humans, we produce 2.6 trillion tons of trash each year. How could we reduce that number? Why is it important for us to reduce that number? As the population grows, it becomes increasingly more and more important to treat the materials that our planet with provides us with well. Each of us have a certain amount of waste we put into the world each day. The average is about five pounds. However, that number can be greatly reduced. I am in environmental chemistry studies and biology studies, and I have been practicing green methods of waste reduction for about six years. One day I hope to reduce my waste output to about zero because yes, we can eventually do that. We just have to recycle our materials or use reusable options instead because believe it or not, most of our materials can be recycled in some way or another. Every single one of us lives on a planet and we have this privilege to call it home and it is the only planet that we have managed to create habitable living situations on. In order to continue living on Earth, we must consider the importance of human interference with our environment. Because of the dire need of waste reduction, I'm going to explain to you. How much waste do we actually produce? Do we know how much waste we produce? How can we reduce the amount of waste we produce? Why should we reduce the amount of waste we produce? Let's begin the discussion by talking about the waste we produce. A lot of us will produce waste and not even think about it much. Where does it go after it's thrown in the trash? According to the FBA, the average American will produce about 4.4 pounds of, days of daily waste. These numbers add up very, very quickly. If everybody in America is producing these numbers on average, and sometimes possibly more, what does that mean for us? What happens to wasted materials? We have three different paths for waste management in the United States. Recycling, waste to energy facilities, and landfills. According to the 2019 article, Where Does Our Garbage Go?, written by Alexander Morse, some of the benefits of some of the landfills, such as the one in Albany, New York, produce several hundred tons of solid waste each year, and this landfill is already scheduled to meet up with its capacity by 2026. That's just three short years away. Not only do landfills take up space on the planet, but they will also emit CO2 and CH4, carbon dioxide and methane. These two gases are major contributors of climate change and our greenhouse gases. According to the 2021 Climate Portal article on MIT, how do greenhouse gases trap heat in the atmosphere? These certain gases will trap the heat in our lower atmosphere and interfere with our climate disaster. Two of these molecules are CO2 and CH4. These molecules will come from the visible light particles hitting the ground and then bouncing around with the infrared particles, particles in the atmosphere. The more CO2 and CH4 there are, the more gases there is for the infrared molecules to latch onto and it will make our planet hotter. While many people people believe it's up to the big corporations to fix the waste waste issue in the world, there are also steps that individual citizens can take as well, individual citizens like you and me. So, how can we reduce our waste output? Many people will say that the waste management needs to be left up to those in charge because it is their fault. However, if the po population as a whole starts producing less waste, then there will ultimately be less waste in landfills and more waste being reduced, reused, and recycled. This is the goal. There are hundreds of ways that we can begin reusing our materials. For example, composting. Composting is a major and very important way to manage our waste output. According to, to the Feeding America, 119 billion pounds of food is wasted in America each year. Most of these can be composted. I know that here where that I work, a lot of our food is wasted. Even in our kitchens, we have chicken and the chicken gets cut in half and then the other half gets thrown away. Why? not really sure, but we do compost it. It does get reused in our farms here at the Walt Disney World. According to the NRD NRDC article on Composting 101 by Sheila Hu, composting is the method of recycling food and organic waste. This waste management technique helps improve soil heal, reduce greenhouse gases, and recycles nutrients back into the ground. Hu also mentioned that nearly 28% of our waste materials can be composted. Next time you see a recycling bin, look inside of it if you can. You'll begin to notice all of the things that should not be in there. For example, I am currently studying while working at the Walt Disney World. I have several recycling bins set up right next to the actual trash cans in our restaurant. However, that does not stop people from misplacing the waste into the recycling bin. And the whole bin needs to be wasted. More often than not, the recycling bins will be filled with materials that should have been composted, not recycled. This is why it is imperative that we teach future genera generations about waste management. If we are able to reduce our waste emissions, then our planet will be happier and healthier place to live. 
Recycling is another common way that we can reduce our landfill waste. Many, many different places offer recycling bins now. But what most people don't know about the about recycling is that there are many strict rules that are placed on what we can and cannot recycle. Many people will throw away an item that has contaminants and the whole recycling bin must be trashed. Some can have because some contaminants as, a, as an example are food, grease, and filmy plastics. The truth is a lot of people do not know enough about recycling to know these rules. It is imperative again that we educate our growing population about recycling and how it truly works so that we can ensure our waste is getting sorted through properly. According to the EPA, it is estimated that about 75% of the waste American produced can be recycled. However, Americans only end up recycling about 30% of it. That is an incredibly small percentage compared to what we could be recycling. Since we have just discussed what waste management is and how in a couple ways that we can reduce our landfill waste, I would like to discuss with you why we would want to do that. If we are able to reduce our waste emissions, then our planet will be a happier and healthier place to live. According to the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, the amount of air pollution in our environment has been linked to heart and respiratory diseases. It has been classified as a carcinogen by cancer researchers. If we were to cut out our landfill production, then our air quality would be cleaner and safer to breathe in. And again, according to the National Institute of Health Environmental Science, the benefits of reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, the CO2 and CH4 that we discussed earlier, could be could prevent nearly half a million premature deaths caused by air pollution. Humans are not the only creature that will benefit from reducing our waste production. The fate of many other animals rests in the hands of our environmental response as well. With the changing environment that we that we live on, animals and environments are being all the environments that animals are living in are being altered as well. This is just one of the ways that we have that we affect the others that live here. However, it is a great one. Habitats are altering in ways that animals cannot evolve quickly enough to survive and in many, many animals, plants, and bugs are on the endangered species list. According to the National Park Service, the rising temperatures lower the species survival rate and and cause environmental changes that lead to less food, less reproduction, and interference with native wildlife. A specific example that I can think of that I've learned recently is that the sea turtles their eggs, they're actually affected by the temperature. So the warmer it is outside, the more likely that their eggs are to be female. And that means that the less male sea turtles there will be. And that puts them on the endangered species list. Today, I've tried to bring awareness to you about human waste production. Each of us have a certain amount of waste that we put into the world each day. The average is about five pounds. However, that number can great, greatly be reduced. I have explained how much waste we produce, described what we could do to reduce that amount of waste, and explained some things that could happen as a result. Waste management can seem stressful and overwhelming at first, but I assure you that just with everything else, it will come as a second nature with practice. I employ each and every one of you to try something new today, tomorrow, or whenever you have the time to do so. Education is key, and I hope that you have learned something new today, and I hope that you choose to share this knowledge with the rest of the world as well.